Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, you know, my dad. Walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, you name it. We're on it. Even threads. Follow us. You get a motivational quote on threads. But anyway, if you want to see our all our visuals, go to our YouTube channel. Sign up for our membership. How you find our membership, go under any of our interviews in our description section. Click the link. It says join our membership click the link it takes you straight to it because a lot of y'all say you love us what we do so forth you want to support us that is how you show your support we thank you in advance and we love you man hey man listen man hey i'm not about to play with y'all y'all know what we do over here man we are in chicago man it's going down man we got the locals in the building the guys who matter D. Brooks is in the building. Producer, platinum producer. Stop playing. What's going on? Man, it's good to have you. Appreciate y'all having me. Man, my energy on a whole nother level because I'm a country <laughs> boy. And it's like like I always tell people, it's like me, I look at it like I'm sitting under the tree talking to all my homeboys. Yeah, so it's so. a whole different world where I come from. I don't know how to do it the whatever, the uh, conservative professional <laughs> way. I'm trying to figure that part out, you know what I'm saying, as we go. So, man, thank you for coming on the show. No, appreciate y'all having me. Man, let's get to it, Mr. Jamaica. Okay, so I like to get into your background and all the business. So, yeah. born and raised, you born and raised here in Chicago? East side of Chicago. East side of Chicago. Yeah. See, I don't hear a lot of east side. I hear the west side, the south side, but I don't, it's like people forget really, about the east side. south side and the east side, it's kind of like the same thing, just a little further south, but um, over east is really like state to the lake. Mm. Mm. So, raised with your mom and dad? Yeah, I did um, my smaller years with both, and then, you know, split, and then... How old were you when they months. split? I was 10, I believe. Okay. 10 or 11. Did you I see it come in? Um, like all the arguments, all the whatever, could you feel that as nah, a child? one thing about them, they never really put that in front of me and my little sister like mm -hmm. that, you know what I'm saying? My mom... Even to this day, my mom don't speak bad on him. He don't speak bad on her. It just was one of them things, you know? But sometimes, it, to me, uh, I'm not saying to argue in front of your kids, but sometimes when they see it coming, it's like they're like, they expect it. But when all of a sudden, out of blue, oh, we splitting up, like, my, what? What's going on? Why? I think it almost affects you even more because yeah. when you see it going wrong, you're like, no, y'all need to be apart. Your kids know. I don't really think we've seen it coming, but I don't think it was one of them things that was just super shocking. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, Did it affect you when you know you had to lose your dad out of the household? Because I know you you saw the split households, but it's still he wasn't there with you. Uh, I think one thing about black men, especially from Chicago, it's like we're so used to just keeping it pushing that a lot of that stuff don't even really catch up until you get older, older. and you get to thinking back like, dang, you know? And I've been doing like therapy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that kind of make you go back and look at your childhood experiences. And realize that that's the reason why. Cause that's one thing, um, that's the reason why I ask the things that I ask. Cause I'm, I'm very into your cognitive thinking, how mm -hmm. you think about how you, and there's so many people who sit here and be like, no, that didn't affect me. Which I know that's a lie, they think it didn't affect them. But until therapy or until they really sit down and go through things and realize that Oh, that's the reason why. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they'd be like, oh, I didn't care if he was there. You know, type of thing. My mom was mom and dad type of thing, but mm -hmm. your mom can't be mom and dad to a young boy. Yeah, you they both understand got what significant I mean? roles for sure. Exactly. And you need both. Exactly. So you stayed with your mom for a little bit, then you went and stayed with your dad, or you didn't stay with Yeah. Okay, so. But they was both in the city, though. Okay, okay, yes. so you still had, so it was you and your sister. Did your sister go with your dad, too, or just she just stayed with mom? Uh, I think I went first, and she was more so just visiting. Okay. That's crazy. I really don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but that's probably one of the things that I did affect, that did kind of affect me. It's like a lot of that shit I just blocked out. Like, 
my memory. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But uh, since you've been going to therapy now and um, thinking back, how did that affect your walk in life all the way up till, say, now? What things stood out to you that the therapist helped you um, really, like, recognize that it was because of that broken household? Why? Um, maybe my hyper-independence, like, just being overly independent and not really being used to asking people for stuff or needing stuff or just, you know what I'm saying? Just your first mind always going towards figuring stuff out on your own. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But I don't know if that was just because of, you know, our dads ain't really, our dad's parents, it was kind of a different way of raising them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was more so just, to be tough. Do what I say and just you right, know what I'm not saying? explain why and stuff like that. But did so it affect I think your they relationship? They really didn't know how to. I think our parents didn't really know like how to communicate. Yeah. Did it affect your relationship with females? Mm. Because then, to me, seeing something like that would be like some people would feel like, oh, she ain't gonna stay around because you know relationships don't work because you didn't see so-called a successful relationship as a child growing up? Probably. I don't think we hit that part in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Why she take this nigga to mental illness clinic? You know, we about to try to figure out if this nigga really doing good in his therapy yeah. sessions. <laughs> I don't think we hit that part yet, but I, that's something I do notice and talk about though. Like, it's not really a lot of people who I could say really just so the idea of marriage and mm -hmm. family to me, like I don't really know a lot of people that's like, yeah, this this is who I'm looking at, like, oh yeah, this cool, it worked, you know what I'm saying? I see more people that's kinda like. But it's not even like they have to sell it to you because then it's, even if you had to have a good woman there who is so-called selling it to you, if your mind isn't right, as in like, because of, in the back of your head, you're like, no matter how much she's good, she not going to be stick around because as a child, you think that, okay, your mom is good, but it still didn't work type of thing. You know what I mean? So sometimes we subconsciously sabotage ourselves in relationships, not realizing the reason why. You know, we nitpick at certain things, not realizing. Even when you have a good woman there yeah, who's trying that. everything, you see what I mean? So that's why therapists or people always say you have to go back and retrain your mind and look at that and be like, everybody's relationship is different just because this happened in your parents' relationship. That don't mean that it's gonna happen in yours unless you sabotage yourself to, you know, doing the same thing. Yeah, but also. Yeah, you just said something for sure. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah, let's go all the way on the opposite side. You meet, you meet a woman like, uh, uh, AKA Sexy Red, uh, somebody who really just know these streets and you do know and you warned by the things you already been through and it becomes something that's a positive side to where you know not to let yourself get caught up in it because you've seen such and such go through it. Yeah, so that that's first two time different. Somebody get down on you, I feel like that stick harder than. A good, a good woman showing you they good side. That's for some right. Reason. You know well, what I'm well, that's because she probably perpetrating. You never know. Right. She but really a gold digger. It's Once you all see kind of somebody stuff. that really know how to lie and finesse and just yeah. get what they want out of you. Yeah. That stick harder than like you know what I'm saying. Somebody, somebody who really got genuine heart. But then you always see okay for. Women, a lot of women always tend to date the bad boys because you always hear women always like, oh, I like bad boys, I don't like the good guys. As much as a good guy will treat you good, do this, do that, yeah. they'll be like, well, he boring. But then some men be like, they like the the women who are, you know, crazy. Like, <laughs> why you always end up with these no. crazy women? And but because you know, they say, why? All right, because we were just talking about this the other day, right? One thing about somebody that's like fiery and crazy versus pride it's like you gonna know how they feel you know what i'm saying it's like they're gonna show you rather than just trying to figure it somebody out. that's a little more hard and stubborn and you know what i'm saying it's like you know it's like we're kind of lean more this way because at least we know like whether you lying or not you showing us something you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying as opposed to just kind of being standoffish and you have you know to figure it out. You just have to figure. She make you work harder because yeah. you don't have to learn her. Yeah. 
Wow, I, I can tell you right now, man, I never didn't know we was going to, because I got some things I could put in there, but I'm going to let them make it. You know, I'm always looking at both sides of the coin, the, 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 the womanizing situations that a man sometimes get caught up in because of the same thing you just said, some of the deceit, the Jezebel spirit, some of the things that will make a man, you know, cry. Uh, academics cried. Here <laughs> you know, so, you know, it could get emotional for us. Yeah. You know, men go through things, you know. And at the end of the day, you know, we just want to be prepared and defensive. At, at some, we be vulnerable a little bit, but we got to be the man because when everything, all else fails, everything comes back to the man. Yeah, yeah, women cry quicker than men do, though, and a lot more. And a lot but as a man, they, nobody really cares until you, until you got do your you shit together. Do you think they care about academics crying? I'm saying in general. Like, no, I don't think they care. He, and, 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 it's like nobody cares unless you got your shit together and you're ready to come through how you're supposed to come through. But other than that, it's like talking about your problems, crying about them, and you know what I'm saying? Just as a man. It, that really don't get you nowhere, but put down sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? As a man, you start crying too much. Then it's going to be like, I got to get away. He cry all the time. Yeah, weak. yeah I'm not saying too much. But, but a woman, it's just, she can cry just every up, day. Get out, yeah. come back stronger. Man, my dad has mm. seen me crying. God bless him, man. Rest in peace, Pops. But, man, i probably get beat. That's what I'm saying. He ain't trying to hear that. We got to be men. We got to step up and be here. Every time, you know, I trip out, and I'm going to get off this off my soapbox, but men crying and not being productive is not going to help this this world. Feel that. That's true, but that's in everything we do, we have to have a balance. Meaning, like, you tend to, that's the problem with men back in the days where, you know, men be like, okay, you got toughen up, don't cry, don't, you know, show your emotions, don't, you know. So it's like men didn't know how to communicate, how to express themselves. They held everything inside, which is not good. So you have to have some balance where you're able to express yourself as in, like, um, what you want, what you feel, how you, you know what I mean? It's like men should not talk about their feelings back in the days, or as you a sissy, you no, this, you no. that. I feel like a man balance is just a long time. Caveman. And I'm gonna tell you something, a producer, you know, uh, not being productive in the house, uh, I, I gotta be productive. And, and that guy that you're talking about, that old man, some of the some of the biggest things that ever happened in this country happened behind that no, none talking man. Who? The man who basically builds that building or go to work every day. That man right there, the fences. Probably. I'm not saying you, should, you can't Denzel be productive. Washington fences, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That father is 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 to be commended at some point as well. We can't just say. Probably never get his credit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they talk down on his emotional standpoint, but at the end of the day, without him being the guy he was, he might not have produced on the level he produced. But you're saying, so you're, you're, you're feeling like um, because you are emotional or you are communicate, you're not productive? No, I'm just saying what they did in the cases they came from, when you start going back too far, you start going back into slavery and everything else. So some of that stuff was coerced because of the things that our ancestors went through. Mm -hmm. So you start to see this thing travel up and we're on a, a course to do better, of course, but a lot of those things we done, some of those times when we were quiet, we were quiet because Massa might whip somebody or kill somebody. So you see what I'm saying? So you, you can't, you can't blame them. You got to look at their production and be proud of where they come from. My granddaddy was going to carry that gun every day. Yeah. He was going to be quiet. He was going to walk in the house. He wasn't going to say much, but he was going to pay the bills. He taught me how to work. He taught me how to fish. He taught me how to be a man, how to go to work every day, get up early in the morning before the women get up. That's what he taught me. So that's the thing that I look at when you look at men that come from that old age. So when I seen him not talking and he talked to me about things that he never did talk to talk in front of grandma about it gave me strength and courage to understand how to be a man because I knew how to present myself in front of a woman because of that he didn't say everything in front of grandma I ain't gonna go there y'all taking me there don't do this because I'm, I'm an old soul I come from grandma and grandpa you know what I'm saying <laughs> and that's that's a cold lick you were about to say something I was on my soapbox no I was just saying um, when you were just speaking on <clears throat> like breaking a man you know back in slavery time me and my homie we were just talking about the Willie Lynch letter. Like, a lot of people never heard of that still. To this day. And just how, you know, they went about just breaking mm -hmm. the biggest, strongest man in front of everybody to just kind of instill fear in it. But in instilling fear, that's like promoting, like, okay, we just got to be 
strong. Like, you know what I'm saying? We but really we can't got say that. Room to, to cry, or, you know what I'm saying? It's just like we kind of just got to shut up and just take a lot of shit to the chin and just, you know what I'm saying? And let me, let me just interject something as well. A lot of times our women uh, basically overlook that in our men today far as the men who still carry these burdens because this stuff is generational. It keeps coming down and down and some people worse than others. That's why you got a divorce rate on an all-time high. That's why you got guys that can't open up because of the situation that you just explained. Yeah. I'm being real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we're supposed to be moving towards the future as in not to forget the past and the things that we went through, That's but true. to learn how to retrain our mind and our thinking to make that better for the future kids that are coming on yeah. to say that, you know what, you can be tough, but at the same time, you need to be vocal. You know, nobody should suppress how you feel, how you think. <clears throat> nobody should make you feel less than a man. Nobody should make you feel like, um, no matter what color, what race, what whatever, what, you know, gender, you are a man and you're supposed to stand up as a man and lead as a man no matter who you are. That's good game. That's good game, but that, that's, a, that's a process. But it's great game. It's definitely the truth. Because like you said, it's a lot of unlearning and, re and relearning. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people got to be able to even see themselves first mm -hmm. before you even start that process. And a lot of times it's hard for somebody to see themselves just because they're so used to, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. being defensive or just kind of high, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. You have to renew your mind. You have to forgive. You have to do these things. But it's a, it's a process. It's easier said than done. So. <laughs> it's a process, man. But let's get to it, man. Let's talk about some of this music, man. Now, sure. you said Drizzy. Drizzy is what? Yeah, I want to talk about that for a second. Like, producing here, how did you even get into it? We're going to get in her, but how did you even get into music? Is it who, who turned you on or who turned you out? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it comes down to the music. Well, really, uh, I kind of grew up in the studio, honestly. Okay. Like my grandma, she had a, um, a resource center for like girls who, uh, you know, had kids and needed help trying to get back on their feet and stuff. So one building across the street, they had a, um, the building with like all the apartments and stuff. And then across the street, the other side, it was the school, the music program, the, you know what I'm saying? So when I used to go out there to visit her, <clears throat> Excuse me. I just always took a liking to going into the the studio wow. and just messing around like as a shorty. Wow, and just that's big. Figuring out, you know what I'm saying, the equipment and just messing around with the piano and the drums and just. Did that keep you out of trouble? Um, well, that was far out. They stayed like all the way by, you know what I'm saying, far. So that was more so like on weekends and. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a couple times a month we'll go out there, but I just always knew when I was going over there, I wanted to go to the studio. You yeah. know what I'm saying? From a, a little age, like probably five, six, seven. Let me ask you this, man, because, you know, when I'm looking at you, you know, and I'm thinking about you growing up here in Chicago, you said the east side, which is connected to the south side. When you think about this Chicago lifestyle, I only can go by the movies. Now, Ice Cube came and they did Barbershop. And it was a second one that I think they did, and they was basing it off of the at first it might have been in Chicago too, but the second one I remember because they was talking about the gangs and the violence, and yeah. and, and I think Tiger was in it. I want to say, and he jumps out the car, and they trying to force the kids to be in these gangs. Like, is that a real thing or is that a movie? Like, is that is there people pressure like that? When you were young, did you see any ways that that yeah, was it's like survival? You know what I'm saying? But it's like the best way I could break it down. It's like, you know how boys in the hood, <clears throat> it's always, no matter where you're from, it's, you know what I'm saying? In these type of situations, it's like, it's a dope boy, it's a Ricky, it's a Trey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we all seeing and growing up in the same things, it's just kind of what you lean more towards, you know what I'm saying? Rap, sports, hustling, you know what I'm saying? like. Some people had fathers that wasn't all the way good enough to get them up out of it, but they were solid and they giving them game. Like, this how you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This how you maneuver. This how you, you know what I'm saying? So I was blessed to have 
you know, a father that really wanted to see me rise from where we was at. Is that how you? My mother, you know, how what you saying? avoided it was just being. Having when I really up, avoided uh, it, uh, uh, it's uh, just upbringing? maneuvering through it. Maneuvering through it. Because you can't really just avoid Like when you go outside and you're Chicago, on a certain like, side of the hood, uh, neighborhood, you hear about all these people from Jeff Ford, Larry Hoover. You hear about all of these different things, uh, 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 all these different channels, like, and, and, and the mm -hmm. legacy is here. Like, and then you got from, the. I mean, I think my boy Don Juan from over here, too. It's a bunch of people from here, bro. And, and it brings a collage, you know, of lifestyle. Like, what was the thing that, that basically kept you from being caught up with it? You know what I'm saying? Basketball and, Basketball. and music. Basketball and music. Like, at one point, I had hoop dreams. And then once I kind of just locked in on music, I knew, like, okay, this is really where I want to go with it. You know what I'm saying? Not to say them the only two options, but... When you, you know what I'm saying, where we from, these is, this was getting put in front of us, like, okay, these are your ways to really be successful. Did you see anybody, uh, victim of gun violence, die in your neighborhood, people that you knew, friends that you grew up sure. with? It, how often did that happen? T too often. Too often. Is it something that has digressed because you've become an older man, or is it something that you still hear that's more intensified? No, it's still it's still people getting affected by gun violence. Like to this day, unfortunately, you know, it's like you kind of become a little more numb to it over the years, and just kind of accept like there's just a part of where we live at. But, but I done lived in different places too. You know what I'm saying? It's really not too different. Than anywhere else. Than nowhere else. Because God got a hedge of protection around you. That's all I'm looking for. The fact of how, how you keep making how D. Brooks keep being yeah. blessed and keep moving on and God keep you in these studios and you in these different places and you hear these different stories but God got a hedge of protection around your life. That's big. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I was just blessed for my people like to kind of putting me early, like just kind of knowing who I am. Like a lot of people kind of seek validation in different ways. So you'll probably, you know what I'm saying, end up in situations that you really don't want to be in or don't know how to maneuver around mm -hmm. and just kind of go down that rabbit hole. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Um Let's talk about the first song. That, was it was it Drizzy the the girl Drizzy that, that the first song that you produced that was on the radio? Nah. What was uh, the first one that that hit mainstream to where you was like, man, I got something? I was working with um, my homie Jaylen. Jaylen, okay. Yeah. And that was the first song that I was kind of getting like we was getting decent spins around the city. And yeah. Tapping in with DJs like maneuvering the different events. Wow. So that was the first, like, okay, I'm seeing how people are reacting to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And they, it seemed like they rocking with it, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, that was my first, like, okay, you could really keep going. Mm. And That's keep hard. Getting a good response, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I def definitely understand. Like, when you. Outside of just doing it in your basement with yeah, your homies. Yeah. What, well, like, like. But the first time, when did you go platinum? Was it just, was it NBA Young Boy or was it somebody else before that? Nah, you that got was a few. NBA Young Boy. Okay, all right. Now, what was? It, how did you even meet with NBA Young Boy to even go platinum? So, I end up in LA because me and uh, and Dreezy, we end up getting like traction with the music we was doing. Me, Dreezy, Katie, um, my homie Sauce, Will. We all just used to be kind of locked in, like. At my in my apartment, just working every day, and just we knew what we wanted, but we didn't really know how to get to it. Yeah, but we knew we had something, so we just locked in every day working. We end up getting some traction. Um, you know, I'm getting on, and Dries had a big freestyle that went viral, and just started getting looks from like Fab, Common, like people just started wow. kind of reaching out, like, oh yeah, you hard. You know what I'm saying? So we turned that into a mixtape. A mixtape turned into a label situation. So that's how I ended up going to LA. In LA, um, 
everything ain't really work out as planned with that situation, but that kind of put me in like fight or flight, you know what I'm saying? What like, happened in LA? Like what, what caused the, just that, the label the, situation? The, the, did they shelf it some people or did they shut down on some situation where they told you one thing and they didn't carry through with it? Like what label was it? Do you can you get into that? Yeah, basically like the guy that so when I said we started getting our traction, you know what I'm saying, our looks. It was basically a guy that came in and just um took us from what we was doing to the label situation, but he was like kind of in the middle of that. And we young, we ain't really understand contracts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We ain't really understand the full business side of everything. So we just kind of end up getting finessed. You know what I'm wow. saying? And, and that and that's uh, Dreezy as well. Yeah, all of us. All of y'all. How many was five of y'all? In the same boat. Um, Dries was the artist. It was another artist, KD. Okay. Um, and then it was like you know producers and engineers, but we was all kind of like wow our own team. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Um, so when you think about just the NBA young boy thing, we didn't get to that. We got to get to where how he ended up after you came back to Chicago, no, or was it I wasn't in LA? coming back without yeah. being up. You was uh, determined. You was like, either, you know, and I'm going to say that. I got to say that because this is a segue right here. I talk about this book I was reading where the man had a, a 5,000 men on a ship and he was going up against a, a, a city with, where it was the army they was going up against had like 25, 30,000 men. Mm -hmm. And when the ships got there and they land, you know, got to land and got ready to fight, they, they everybody got off the ship and they looked back and all of the ships was burning. They burned them. And they say, you know what I'm saying? Either we win or we die. Mm -hmm. That's how. That's the intensity that you had, right? Facts. <laughs> so you. So I let's definitely walk. wasn't coming back <laughs> messed up or not. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, all right, I got to figure it out. This ain't really go how I wanted it to go. So now what? And even going back to, you know what I'm saying? The whole. Uh, what we was just talking about. The mental about. illness and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just like, I was walking around for like really like a whole year with just a big chip on my shoulder for how that went. Oh, it just took you some and time really to get through that. I didn't understand, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To the point to where I'm walking in rooms like bringing the energy that I don't want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Just because it's like I... I'm not finna let nobody else, you know what I'm saying? Because you hadn't forgave. Position. Really, it was more so myself, too. Like, hadn't forgave. I really kind of had a lot of anger towards the person that it came from, but at the end of the day, it's like I, I really wasn't smart about how I did this. Correct. You know what I'm saying? And I really should have just kind of been on my business a little better. But see, when I say I hadn't, you hadn't forgave, you hadn't forgave the person or yourself. Or myself. You see what I'm saying? Because... The, the book I read say you ought to love your neighbor as you love yourself, but how can you love your neighbor if you don't love yourself? Right. So you have to have something to where you can love yourself and understand that you're going to make these different situations, but you got to have a clean say. Yeah. you got to let it go. You know what I'm saying? And it that, wasn't personal. You know what I'm saying? Just coming to that realization, like, a lot of this stuff don't be personal. Like, everybody doing what's best for them at the end of the day. Wow. So, okay. So... Again, let's talk about this NBA young boy. How you? Oh yeah, that. so I'm you, leading up you to that. Up, yeah. So basically, I wasn't coming back to Chicago like in a in no other position, but elevated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah, stayed sure. out there. I was just meeting people, uh, maneuvering. You know what I'm saying? I end up having to leave the um, the. Um, the house that the label was putting us in. So it's like, all right, I'm really out here on my own. I ended up meeting um, another artist, Simba. Okay. He going up right now, too. Simba? Yeah. And he was in uh, L.A.? Yeah. Me and him ended up locking in, um, working, you know what I'm saying? And um, I think like six, seven months, we ended up getting a deal with Columbia. Wow. So it's like, all right, now stuff kind of looking up a little bit. I got that kind of weight off me. Really, before we 
was able to do that. I had to get that off of me first mm. to even be in position to bring good energy towards the situation. So we figured that out. And then uh, I was just out there moving around, going to different labels, you know what I'm saying? Playing beats, doing writing sessions. Uh, then I ended up linking up with uh, Atlantic, or APG. And they had Young Boy. And he had, um, I was going in there doing writing sessions and then um, they had started a verse to Untouchable but he ain't finish it. He ended up getting locked up. <laughs> and then when he got out, that was like the first song he wanted to get to. Like, wow. like I really want to finish that song and put it out. And then when he put it out, it just went up instantly. Like, wow. he had like 12 million on YouTube the first night. The first night. This was after probably Double A. I, I interviewed Double A, he's a producer as well. He, uh, actually a Grammy Award winning producer and he, he talked about his encounters with, with, with NBA Youngboy, how when he first, you know, they first linked up and they they did a whole thing where you had like nine songs on there. I think that was an early come up as well. Like yours was more of when he had established himself on the label, right? I think this was like, I think Untouchable was like his coming out song. Like I, he had a big, um, he had like a big buzz, but I think that's like the song that's like kind of put him over the top to where we all know what's going on with him. How did and he just got out of jail, so it just made the whole situation. How, like, it made it go harder. How did how did you end up picking the, the beat that you produced? Really, I made that beat for Thug, Young Thug. Okay, so you had a relationship with Young Thug as well? Uh, with his producers. Okay, what is the producing team? I ended up going to Chalice Studio in LA. I played it for him, but it was like a lot going on in the studio, you know yeah, what I'm Yeah, so saying? he didn't get I'm to like, feel it like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gassed up thinking like, I'm I'm gonna do this. I know in my mind, once he hit this, it's over. But he like, all right, turn it on. So I played it. I'm like sitting back looking for the reaction, but he walking around, moving in and out the studio, like, I don't know. He ain't really he ain't hearing how I'm what to you get yeah. him here. So he came in, he came back in the studio. He like, all right, that's hard, put on another one. Oh damn. So but I played he the next the one. one. I played the next one. He it's hard. Go in and record it. So I'm like, all right, bet. So then uh So he used one? Mm. -hmm. I think we did like a couple that night. But did he have, did it ever come out? Mm -mm. See, that's what be I be tripping off of them on because they have so much going on. These people be having so much music. It's like when it come down to pick for the album, they picking through like hundreds of songs, or you know what I'm saying. But you, the good thing is y'all had a face off that you was yeah. there in there with him. How was his energy back then? His energy back then, like like far as you know, uh, you know, he been locked up for a while now. But how was it? Was this how far? This had to be a while back. Yeah, this was in um, 2017, I believe. 2017, but they was on fire. Back then, that nigga was doing some songs. Man, him and Tip had some. T him and T.I. had a burner back then. You yeah. was in that time. Yeah. I know exactly when you talking about. It was going crazy back mm -hmm. then, man. If it ain't about the money. If it ain't about the money. Yeah. I, I can hear it. I do. I was going to get that. Yeah. It was during that time. That, 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 that thuggle. Man, so you felt good about it. And so you had to have a good feeling about coming from Chicago and then making the moves in the grind that you was making during that time, for sure. Mm -hmm. You had to be proud of yourself. How did, yeah. your, how did your people feel about it here? Like, they were hearing things at this point. Yeah, my people, as far as, like, my homies. Yeah, ho yeah everybody people at home. Stuff with me. Yeah, everybody was kind of happy and waiting to see what was going to happen. Happen, yeah. Uh, with my folks. I was still more so was trying to. You got big, you got big dreams, don't you? You got you like I ain't thinking think about this. I got. Well, I kill. was, but I was just trying to more so prove myself to them, like that I was doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? That's hard. That's My hard. Decision was concrete because how many people just making it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man? yeah. Versus how many people be in their basement rapping? That's producing. right. That's right. So it's like, all right, I'm, move, I'm taking a chance. I'm moving to LA. 
I done lived in Florida. I done lived in Virginia. I done, you know what I'm saying, did all these things that's taking me away from my family and my, you know what I'm saying, the people I love. So it's like I'm knowing they kind of looking like, like, you know what I'm saying? Is you sure about this? You know what you're doing? Like, so I was more so just ready to prove to them, like, I, so, I got something concrete to show y'all like it was worth it. So when you, when you okay, now this bittersweet moment happens. You, you, the bitter part was when uh, Young Thugger just passed this dope beat that you had put your, uh, yeah. your, your you, you had put that blood sweat. I ain't gonna say you had put bitter. that snap on it. You had put that yeah. snap on it. You, I supposed to rock this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and it did rock him. So you get through with that, okay, but then you, boom, you, you, you now get to NBA Youngboy, like, and then he picked this beat. Yeah. Like, like, how did he end up picking this beat? Um, did somebody? He I want to say it. through the through the A and I, Jeff. I got a good relationship with Jeff, Jeff Vaughn. Okay. He was at APG at the time, but he was even reaching out. Like, excuse. Me. Okay. He was even reaching out before. Um, we moved to LA. Like when we were still in. Um, wow. In Chicago, me and Drees was working. He used to just be sending me emails like, I like what you're doing. Just being send cool. Me, send me some beats. Yeah, I, I remember that. I need to hit him up and just let him know that I appreciate, appreciate it. That. But he, he used to always hit me up before I even knew who he was. Um, so when I finally got to L.A., he used to tell me, come to the studio, come wow. to the session. So he come liked your sound. Sessions. Yeah. So which camera I'm on? Jeff? You on all of them. Man. I appreciate but you, for sure. Like, I gotta <laughs> let him know that. I need to call him. Man, that's dope, that. man. Like, so he gets this beat to, to NBA Youngboy. Yeah. NBA Youngboy picked the beat. Do you ever talk to NBA Youngboy or anything? You just, because this music thing is crazy. No, nah, not at that time. He had recorded it before we met. I didn't even know he had the beat. You didn't even know? How did you find? When did you know? So Jeff hit me up like, yo, um... It's this guy, NBA young boy. He got a. Uh, you knew who he was. I heard of him, but he wasn't like he how wasn't he NBA is young now. boy like he is. Now. He was still buzzing for sure, but he wasn't like how he is now. So I was kind of like just you know I heard him, I looked him up, but he was like, um, yeah, you know he really loves one of these songs. Um, he's getting out of jail. He's telling me as soon as he get out, he want to finish recording it and put it out. So I'm like, all right, bet. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Let's do it. I looked him up. And he had like, um, he had some good uh, traction. Yeah, traction for sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't know it was gonna do what it did. Yeah, so I ain't gonna cap and say I knew it was just gonna go over crazy like that. It did like 12 million like the first night. Um, on YouTube. And that was the first in, in, hours. what was it called? In, in uh, Untouchable. 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 Scarf has got untouchable. I'm an old nigga, so I'm thinking <laughs> untouchable. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, so um, that's dope, man, to even be, to see that kind of success. Uh, what was your reaction when you first seen it go up like that? Because you, you, so you I was with like my that. homies, um, Naeem, and then we just kind of watching it when it first dropped. First, we was just gassed off like, Soon as the video came on, he on FaceTime with Meek. So it's like, all wow, right. that's hard. So we got Meek Mill, we got Young Boy. It's like cool. So then we just steady going back to it. Each hour, it's like jumping, jumping, Up jumping, jump. jumping. So it busts the M. So I'm like, dang, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't checked it again. I think it was like two, three million. Oh, never. I don't know what they got going on, but. <laughs> I'm with it, you know what I'm saying? I think it ended up doing like 12 million. That first, night, that's crazy, man. Night. That's but crazy. But it was off the hype of him getting out, it was off the song, it was like, you know what I'm saying, the video, it just all came together the right way. Have any other, or anybody else that you work with had, it definitely wasn't on that level, right? Uh, that, that 12 million in one day. That's, that's probably that's man. Yeah, that's that NBA fastest, young boy, man. That was the fastest. He doing it now. I'm um, crazy with it. Yeah. You just was at the tip of the first when it first took off like that. Yeah. But anybody else that you like even do like a million or two million? Like who who yeah, who sure. sticks out to you? Like we who? just went go um to on the thirty first 
With Queen Nigel. Okay, Queen Nigel. Okay, and that the uh, thirty first. Yeah, like a couple days ago. A couple days ago. That was Halloween. Got, the album just got certified gold. That's hard, man. That's hard. You you now done got your groove. Like you 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 kind of feel like okay, this one might do good. Okay, this one, do you kind of feel something now? Yeah, I already I already was on Queen Niger for sure. Okay, uh, and then uh, that was Jeff again. The same Jeff hell, no. again, boy. You you hey man, this damn Jeff. Me and him might need. I need to get him and interview him. This nigga yeah. know he know music. Yeah, that was Jeff again. He plugged me on because that's when he went to Capitol, and she was at Capitol. And um, I was like going through something then the whole time. Like that whole year was just crazy. And I, dang, that's crazy. I'm thinking about this story. <laughs> the whole year was just crazy. And I was just getting out of like a crazy relationship. And I just had saw myself like, like, dang, I ain't been, you know what I'm saying? Doing what I'm supposed to have been doing. I'm tripping. Like, I really just had to talk to myself. Like, I'm tripping. I talked to my homie Naeem. Like, yeah, I'm tripping. I need to just push this to the side and just get back what I'm supposed to do. So I just end up, this was all in one day. Wow. We had that conversation. I end up just going through my phone, just looking at my contents. So I'm like, all right. I started hitting up A&R's. And I came across Jeff name. I knew he, he always rocked with me. So I uh, I just hit him up, like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? I, uh, you got any artists you need anything for? Hey, oh, yeah, what's up, man? I'm glad you called me. Um, Queen and I just working on an album right now. I need something ASAP. Sent the beats. He picked one. He's like, I think she'll love this one. Um, same night. So he sent them to her. He's asked, I think she'll love it. And then, like, I think, like, three, day to, three days later, um, we had a reference. A couple days later, she cut it. So it was just like. She took that thing. Yeah. And how did you like the song? So I you just had it? to, like, it's like blocking out negativity is a yeah, big part of yeah, man. the creative process and even just knowing what you got to do and just being on track, like. Blocking out the outside world and just all the, you know, negativity is like. It's important. I want to ask you about like, Manny Fresh, Timberland, the old cats, Kanye West, like, um, who else, man? Let me keep going. Uh, I'm say, uh, for real, because that's literally like, like, my like, Mount like, Rushmore. That like, you just that's said. what I'm saying. Like, what, what, what? Who was the driving factor for you? What, what pushed you? All right, so I came up on. Manny Fresh, what he was doing with the hot the boys. Beast mode, beast mode, wasn't he? Uh, <laughs> Lil Wayne, Juvenile, BG, Hot Boys. That was like, that was like, I, I like this. Sound. So you was in the Cash Money. That was yeah. your, that was your go to. Like to say these boys, th this Manny Fresh is something different. It was Wayne and 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 it was the the rappers, but it was more so the sound. Like I was just kind of intrigued by like the beats. Yeah, like, like Manny Fresh going crazy. Then it went to like Timberland, um, but when Kanye came out, that's that basically Ooh. was that was like oh three oh four. Yeah, you you don't even understand like all this stuff you telling me about is things that I really understand that this music thing is so dope because it changed the mood of everything. Experience and, and, and sure. you when you were phasing when I, reason I asked you that question is because you have to be in a certain place to be able to adapt and accept and push out. You see what I'm saying? You ain't just you ain't just out here making beats. It don't work like that. It no, is. it's some things happening with you mentally. It's definitely spiritual. And, and spiritually, sure. that's, that's like okay, that's why this happened, and that's what I'm asking you. That's why when I named yeah. uh, those those Pharrells and those Kanyes and Timberlands and Manny Fresh <laughs> and who else? Did I, man, I gotta say, Mr. Lee, you don't even know. And Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee did Blue Lace. I always throw him in there because he get forgot a lot of time. He got 31 plaques, man. He's a platinum producing uh, a guru when he come down to the South. So, mm -hmm. you know, them guys, man, you they just on a whole nother level, bro. And 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 you, as a young man, 30-something, right, you, you in this whole mode, right, you watch this, you seen this, you had to look at these things and say, I want to push mine on this level. You know what I mean? Not the sound, but the level. <clears throat> But like I was saying, Manny Fresh and Timberland and them, that was more so the sound. 
I was just intrigued him. with the sound, but when Kanye came out, that was like how he came out. It just made you feel like, oh yeah, I could do this. You know what I'm saying? And he I'm from like, your city. He from my city. <clears throat> he from the same area. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And just his whole approach to just like not being told no and just like whoever didn't see his vision, it's like, all right, that's cool, but that ain't really stopping what I got going on. It's just I'm doing it my own way, a different way than people used to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm coming out pink polo shirts. Yeah. Louis backpacks is like people were still, you know what I'm saying? Popping they, out what big you jeans said. hard yeah. around there. So he like, I'm coming out doing me, like, and I'm and I'm taking it to the highest level I could take it. As he did. And he believed it. And it don't matter who else ain't believe it. It's like he believed it so strong it made you look at it and just relate, like, dang. Like I could, you know, I feel the same way about what I got going on, you know what I'm saying? Wow. But that was just the person that let you know Man, how you could push it through. That Kanye is something different, bro. Like, <clears throat> I still to this day, you go back and listen to Jesus Walk and all these different songs that this man yeah. did. Spiritualism was always there. People try to count that out, but they can't. It Basically, always he there. always talked like that. He always rapped like that. He always stood on that. But then people today say, hey, he crazy. No, you crazy because you don't know the history of Kanye because if you look at the history of where he came from, he was doing that stuff early on. He just did it on another level when he got to be, as he grew. Yeah. And, it, and it just pretty much was just, to me, just you seeing what was produced out of who he is as he became the man he is today. Yeah. I really, I know that, so I'm a big Kanye fan, period, point blank. I'm, I'm with it. The Yeezys, the clothing, all that stuff wrapped up in a bow. Kanye is dope, bro. Yeah. And, and I'm, that's why I be up here in Chicago, because I know the nigga real. You know, like, far as the way he put it down, mm -hmm. I rock with it, man, in, the, in, in a whole nother level, a whole nother way, bro. So so you say y'all from the same area. Like, yeah, did you ever meet him? I tattooed that album on me. Did you ever meet this dude my, yet? Yeah. How was that? Now, see, I ain't know it you. It was short. It don't matter. Shit, I ain't met him. Yeah, it was yeah. just... <laughs> It wasn't like, all right, we just was locked in, but it was just real short, and it was just like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really get a chance to tell him. It inspired you. But yeah, it was just, it was cool, it was short. Did he see? But I actually he... got the the college dropout album. You tattooed it on Tattooed on me just because of how inspirational it was for me, like, you know what I'm saying? That's that really hard. is the reason that I'm even, I, yeah, I said it, that's probably the reason I'm, I took it over serious because I really believed I could which I got that from that album. Wow, that's crazy, man. That's 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 heavy though, bro, the fact that, you know, God give you these things, he push them in there so that you can keep going, right? Because back then, it wasn't a lot of people just out. It probably was like Common. Yeah, Common was out. And Kanye was like breaking through. Twister was out, you know what I'm saying? What happened it wasn't to that just old? a lot of people that was like, oh yeah, just do this, do this, do this, and then this how you make it. It was like it was like kind of far fetched still, you know what I'm saying? Why them old conscious boys at old <clears throat> chance and and come and they was conscious. They was that was a thing for a minute. Yeah. Everybody was really trying to do right. We need them boys back with all, some of the stuff I'm hearing out here. We need them boys to get back in that booth, man, and yeah. really push hard to 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 get some some type of equilibrium into the game, man, because these guys offset now. You know what I'm saying? The drill music kind of wiped things away a little bit, didn't it? They stopped doing it as much. I, ain't gonna I, lie I, ain't, to you. I got my ears to the streets like that. I feel like it's all music is out here. It's just certain shit get pushed to the forefront. Okay. For like a specific agenda, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? When you seen the drill music come, you had did you you had to produce? Yeah. Like you figured it out. Yeah, me and Dreezy, we all came out of that. Like even though we was kind of doing stuff our own way, it was still influenced by what was going by on. By what was going on. Wow. <clears throat> Y'all changed the world with that. You see that everywhere. Everybody try to mimic what Chicago did in that drill movement. Yeah. And one thing about L, I always get L his flowers because he made a sound that's like still getting mimicked to this day with the whole, the actual sound of the drill beats. Yeah, yeah. In that pattern, it's like, these people done took that to New York drill, UK drill, African drill. Like he really started a sound that was like lived on past what we thought it was gonna be. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, so 
Man, I'm just happy that, that we got to sit down with you, man. Um, top three producers of all time, dead or alive. Top three. Only three. Quincy Jones. Okay. Dr. Dre. Man. Kanye. Kanye, that's a, that's a, that's hard right there. That's hard. Man, like uh so how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out and link up with you? D Brooks exclusive, everything, um, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I don't got no Facebook no more. Man, I'm still on Facebook, y'all. Y'all can hit me up, E. <laughs> but no, man, shout out to Black and CC in Dallas, oh, yeah. man. Shout out to sure. CC yeah, and There Black. you go. Come on now. They Let's get it. Up. They Them set us people, up. Man, like I got crazy love for CC. Yeah. And Black, because he take care of CC. You know That's hard, saying? man. Like, CC was was with me when we was starting everything. Like CC was in there. Wow. She was the one like helping us push, helping us. Her energy was on another level. CC make you feel like you could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Her energy was on another she level. That's you feel my like, girl. Whatever you think about, you could do it. Like, what's up? Let's see how to figure it out. I love CC for that, man. She man. like it's like certain people you'll get around. And then I kind of make you feel like, oh no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Realistic, like, and then certain people, it's like, if they hear your dream, it's like, what's up? Let's get to it. Let's get it. Motivation. That's CC for sure. Wow, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I hope we covered everything. I hope this ain't the last time we sit down. You coming to Dallas, you gonna come to my yeah, spot. Yeah, I'll be out there in Dallas. Yeah, whenever you come, you pull up, you like, E, I'm here, man, let's get it in. I'm gonna show you some love, man, for sure, man. Appreciate y'all. Man, come on, man. D. Brooks, you family now, man. That's how I go down. That's how quick it can happen, man. You never know what God is doing, man. So you just gotta keep yourself open to work so he can guide you. I'll say that, man. So, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, bro. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.